Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the Lynx 12 and is this a good choice for home defense. I, I'm pretty sure I've talked about this before, recently came up in my comments uh, and I want to talk about it again and maybe add a few things that I may have not talked about in the past. Okay, so um, Lynx 12, uh, first thing I want to talk about is reliability. Okay, um, because that's like one of the most important things when you're considering a, a, a gun for home defense, right? Reliability. Um, now, the, I have two, I actually have three Lynx 12s. Um, two of them, okay, this is one of them, two of them have uh, 15,000 oh, 15, plus rounds on it, okay? So a little bit over 15,000 rounds. Uh, so I have a lot of experience with these guns. Um, I think uh, I, I've had to change the recoil spring on it twice. Okay, um, so you know it is something that's going to wear out, um, and uh, also on one of these I broke the bolt. I broke the bolt at 11,000 rounds, um, which is you know what I mean. It's not uncommon for things to start breaking once you get over you know once you start approaching approaching 10,000 rounds. Uh, most of you guys are never going to shoot more than uh, you know more than a couple of thousand rounds. Um, and that said, on my home defense guns, right, the guns that I use for home defense, I have maybe fired uh, maybe 1,500 rounds on them. Uh, you know, basically enough to establish reliability. And then, like, I'll only shoot them, like, a couple times a year just to make sure the red dot's working, that they're still zeroed. Um, so the guns that I use for home defense, I don't shoot a lot once I establish reliability, okay? You know, so so you know that, that, that's so the point is that the fact that I've got 15,000 rounds on this, and the gun broke at me at some point, um, is 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 a non-issue. Okay, uh, what is an issue is that um, a lot of the feedback that I have gotten from you guys in the comments uh, is that you some of you guys have bought some of these Lynx 12s, and you have had problems with them, um, like you've had problems with the gun not working, not cycling, and I believe you guys. Okay. Um, um, you know, I, I, here's the thing, I have three of them worked right out of the box, um, and the thing I'm going to say about the Lynx 12 is it's made in China, and we don't know at what factory or factories they're made at, we don't know who the managers are at particular times, we don't know um, if all the parts are made at one factory, or if, there, or if there's multiple factories that make parts that, that you know, this company that makes the Lynx 12 then buys those and maybe at some point they switch, um, you know, who they buy their parts from. So we, we know nothing about the uh, manufacturing process of the Lynx 12, um, you know, you know so, so, so just because my gun is reliable does not mean your gun's going to be reliable, okay? So right there is the answer I think that most of you guys want to know. Is the Lynx 12 a good gun for home defense? Um, especially to somebody that's asking me in terms of he's about to buy one, right? He's looking for a, uh, a home defense gun. He's like, hey, I like your Lynx 12. Should I buy this for home defense? My answer is no. Don't buy it for home defense um, because the one that you buy may not be as good as the ones that I bought, okay? You know, that's just how it is. Um, now, it's a great gun to buy for, you know, busting clay birds and having fun with. Absolutely. Um, but until you've actually, you know, if you buy the gun, you know, be aware, if you're buying it for home defense, be aware that you've got to shoot at least a thousand rounds through it uh, to establish reliability. Um, and here's the thing, you know, sometimes, you, you know, just because it works with one type of ammunition or one certain, certain magazines, hey, it may not work with all of them. Um, the, uh, these magazines that I have bought here, um, uh, you know, I did get some defective ones that were making the gun jam up, right? I did a video on fixing these. Um, so, so that's an important consideration. The, your magazines might be part of the problem. Okay, uh, so you've got to you got to test the gun. You got to test the magazines. You got to test the ammo. Although my guns pretty much shoot with any with any 12 gauge ammo as long as the magazines are good. Okay, but that's something I had to you know I kind of had to work through. Right, kind of debug it. Luckily, when I um, uh, at the point that I got my Lynx 12s, I already had magazines that I had be, been using with my Sega 12 that were already established as, hey, these magazines work great. So I threw those, you know, when I started using those magazines on my Lynx 12s, you know, I had no problem. So if you're having a, a problem with your Lynx 12s, it, it could be your magazines, okay? I'm not saying that it is, but it could be. Uh, but it may also just be that, hey, 
you know, you, you, your Lynx 12, the one that you bought was of a different lot than the ones that I bought. Right? And most likely, you know, and I got three of them that I bought at different, you know, at, at different time periods. So all three of them are probably from different lots. I think I just got lucky, okay? Um, so, uh, so that's the first thing I'm going to put out there. Um, second thing I'm going to put out there um, is um, I want to talk about the mag changes, right? Um, because here's the thing. Um, first of all, I've got, I got four guns here, right? My, my five must-have guns are AR-15, AK-47, uh, a Glock, uh, a 1022 rifle, and a Lynx 12, right? Those are my, my top five guns. I've done other videos on that. Uh, I don't have the 1022 on this table because we're talking about home defense. So I've got the other four guns here, okay? So with the AR-15, right, um, if you get a jam with this gun, right, uh, usually it's, you know, it, it might be a magazine problem, it might be an ammo problem, it might be a user, you know, problem, whatever it is, the, the way that you troubleshoot it is you take out the magazine, right, you may have to rip it out, right, you clear the gun, okay, right, lock the gun open, okay, put your magazine in, and then back, you're back to work, okay, so, in order to fix the gun, you have to have a second magazine, okay, so that, that's an important thing, so here's the thing, with the AR-15, these magazines are small enough, right, even the 30 round magazines are small enough that I can just put this in my back pocket, and it's going to stay there, right? You can see how that, it's all the way in my pocket, right? 30 round magazine, all the way in my pocket, right? And I got 30, 30 rounds there, okay? So if, if this gun stops, stops working, right? So here I am, bang, 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 gun stops working, rip out the mag, clear this, take the mag, take this one in, put that in, okay, charge it guns ready to work okay um, the problem with the Lynx 12 is look how big the magazines are okay not only are they big right it's almost you know you know it's about about 50 percent bigger not only are they big bigger wider it's not going to fit in my back pocket right uh, and it only holds 10 rounds okay uh, that's a serious handicap because in order to fix the gun I need a second magazine so uh, it's a lot harder to carry these magazines on my body. Um, now, there's a solution. You can plant these, right? You can put, put them under your bed or, uh, you know, by your window or wherever. You can plant these, but the point is that you've got to have at least one extra magazine. And given that these only have 10 rounds, I would probably keep at least 5 to 10 extra magazines. Um, but, you know, because it's bigger, you can't just easily put this in, in, in the pocket of the pants that you normally wear every day, okay? Uh, that's something that, you know, even with an AK, which is a little bit bigger, right, it's, a, it's just a little bit bigger, you know, I, I can put this in my back pocket, right? Because uh, now you might say, well, how, what about a tactical vest and, and a war belt and all this crap, you know? I mean, who goes to sleep in a tactical vest, right? You know, you take your magazines, you have them, you know, when you go to your safe, you take the gun out, you know, put a mag into it, charge it, take another magazine, throw it in your back pocket, you know, that is a realistic, you know, uh, shit hit the fan type of situation where somebody's, you know, trying to break through your door, right? You know, that's what's going to really happen, okay? So, you're not going to have a, you're not going to be sleeping in a tactical vest. You're going to take an extra magazine, you're going to throw it in your back pocket. Uh, obviously, with the with the Glock mags, they're, you know, that's that's easy to fit back in there. I don't even have to demonstrate that. All right, so that, that's an important consideration. When your gun jams, you need a second magazine in order to fix it. Okay, uh, now you might say, well, what if I just take the magazine out and, you know, clear the gun and, you know, I mean, yeah, that might be the problem, you know, but the thing is the, the, the best way to do it is just get a, a fresh magazine, the fresh magazine in there because what if something's wrong with the magazine, okay? Um, so that's an issue with that Lynx 12. It's, it takes a really big magazine that does not have a lot of rounds in it. Um, so you need to, you know, you, you have to have at least one extra one on your body and this is kind of hard to put on your body, okay? Now, the other thing I'm going to talk about uh, is, since we're on, on the subject of jams, okay, um, let's talk about which guns are most likely to jam uh, based on my experience of, of, uh, of training new shooters. And the reason why I'm focusing on new shooters is because I find that, um, you know, experienced people, when you put them in stressful situations, 
uh, they make a lot of the mistakes that beginners make. Okay, so so um, I study new shooters to see what type of mistakes they make, to see what type of mistakes experienced people will make, and 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 you know basically that's how I, I kind of formulate my you know my, my planning. Right, so I, I don't when I when I train people I don't assume that 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 they're gonna um, that they're not gonna make mistakes. I assume that they're gonna make mistakes. And I want to have a an easy, quick plan for them to fix those mistakes. Okay, so um, with these with these guns, and I'll start off with that with the main gun here, right? These are recoil operated guns, right? All right. So in order for the gun to work, right, basically the bottom part of the gun has to stay still while the top half is running back and forth. Okay. If you let the gun move around, it's going to jam up because basically, you know, the slide's not going to come back all the way. Okay, so um, what I find is with beginners, a lot of times they're limp wristing the gun, the gun's jumping up all over the place, and the gun jams. Okay, so uh, when 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 training beginners, right, and I, I, I train lots of beginners, I, I go to different ranges, I, I travel around the, you know, uh, you know, I, I train people on their property, so I've seen lots of beginners shooting, and of all these guns on the table, the Glock, the AR, the AK, the Lynx 12 is the one that they jam up the most. And I'm talking about my gun, okay? My gun, which is reliable, that that never jams when I shoot it. Well, when I give this to a beginner, they often jam up the gun. Now, sometimes uh, one of the reasons why they'll, they will jam up the guns is because when they put the shells in, they don't press them all the way back against the wall. So that, that's one issue, right? But uh, other times it's simply because they're just, you know, um, you know, they're not pulling the gun tight into, your, into the chest while they're shooting. Although I'm able to shoot this gun like this. I, I've, I've done videos where I'm shooting the gun like this and the gun's working. But hey, I, it might be that I have a more firm grip over here. Um, you know, I, I just, you know, I mean, the stats are when I, when I train beginners, the Lynx 12 is the gun that they're going to jam up the most. The next most likely gun that they're going to jam up. Uh, is 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 the is the, the pistol, and I don't care. I mean, this you know whether it's a Glock or a Sig or a Beretta, handguns they tend to jam up a lot because now they're not pressing it up against their chest like with a rifle. So with this, they gotta push forward into the gun. And again, if they're letting the gun move around, there's a good chance they're gonna jam it. Okay. Um, so so the handgun is the next most likely gun uh, that they are gonna jam up. And then we're at the other end with the guns that they are least likely to jam up. Um, ARs and AKs. Okay, where are they? Yeah, there you go. ARs and AKs. Um, between the AR and the AK, uh, they're uh, uh, they're they're more. They, if they're going to jam one of these two up, they're more likely to jam up the AR versus the AK. Uh, the reason is the AK does have a little bit more pressure in the system, a little bit more recoil. So even if they're holding the gun loose, the gun's you know moving a little bit. You know, uh, but that said, I have seen beginners who jam up AKs. All right, people say AKs never jam. Listen, I I, I watch people people I watch people jam up AKs all the time. Okay, um, it doesn't happen often. Rather, it's, I'm not gonna say I see it all the time. It doesn't happen often, but it does happen. Uh, if they're holding the gun too loose, bolt doesn't come back all the way. Um, and you know, I can't jam up an AK. I, I can hold the gun loose. I can bump fire. The gun works fine. Um, but I've, you know, it doesn't happen often, but it does happen. Okay. Uh, next, most likely gun after that is the AR-15. Uh, it doesn't happen often, but it does happen, especially um, if they, uh, you know, if, if they hold, if they're not leaning into the gun. When when I first started learning how to bump fire without a stock on an AR, um, I was, I, you know, I've done videos on bump firing this. Basically, I, I, I lock, I make the gun. Hold on. I've done videos, basically I hook my hand like this, right? I put this on the outside of my shoulder so the gun rocks back and forth and I pull the gun forward. Um, when I first started practicing with that, I used to you know, fire a couple of rounds and then the AR would jam up on me. Obviously it's not meant to be shot that way, it's meant to be pressed in against your shoulder. Uh, compared to the AK, when I first learned, when I, again, when I was first learning how to bump fire, when I would do this with the AK, put this on the outside of my shoulder, pull the gun forward, uh, the AK was a lot less, I mean, some, I mean, occasionally I might jam it up, but it was a lot less likely to jam up, okay? So by far the AK um, is more reliable if, you, if, if you're not handling the gun properly. The problem with the AK is that it's uh, uh, too front heavy for most women. Um, so, you know, when, when you're trying to decide which is the best gun for home defense, don't just consider yourself, consider 
uh, other people in your household, your wife, your kids, your neighbors, right? That that you know you might need for assistance. Um, you know, you know, consider which guns would be the easiest for them, uh, and that by far is the is the AR-15. Uh, although it is a little bit more prone to jamming compared to an AK, it is so much easier to shoot recoil wise and 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 it's less front heavy because it doesn't have that piston over there um you know that it it still m usually makes this the better choice okay just because it's lighter your wife can shoot this your girlfriend can shoot this um so so that's i think important information for you guys to consider uh as far as um the lynx 12 for a home defense gun like i said the one i have very reliably you know I wouldn't have a problem using this gun for home defense, but I would definitely have a backup gun, right? I would have some backup gun. It's not that. It's, it's this, right? Always have two guns, right? Always have two guns. Um, when, I, when I tell that to people, sometimes people will say, well, how about like military guys? Um, you know, they usually have just one rifle, right? But there's usually, you know, they're usually not alone. There's u they're usually part of a unit. So if their gun stops working, you know, they can take cover fix their gun while other people are providing cover and support and, you know, and, and cover fire and stuff like that. Okay. So, so in the military unit, um, you know, yeah, most soldiers only get one gun, but they're part of a larger team. So there's really at least four other guns there. All right. Uh, whereas like in a home defense type of situation, a lot of times you may be on your own. So you always got to have two guns. Okay. Um, so, uh, usually what I recommend is AR-15 and the Glock. Okay. Uh, those are two the two guns, and if it's not going to be an AR and a Glock, uh, you know it can be a um, uh, an AK and a Glock, or an AR and an and an, a, an AR and an AK. Although it's good to have a, a a small concealable gun in case you get into a close quarter grappling situation, while somebody's trying to pull the gun off you, you just go to your backup pistol. So usually you want to have a pistol as a backup gun. Pistols only a backup gun; it's never a primary gun. Uh, so that's why no matter. You know, most likely, no matter which gun you're using, you're always going to want to have the pistol as a, as a backup. Um, but yeah, my first choice AR, second choice AK, and then after that, we can go to Lynx 12. But uh, just to recap, uh, reliability-wise, it doesn't. You know, quality control is who knows. You know, uh, who knows who was in charge that particular month when they were building your gun. Okay, I know what when they built my guns. You know, somebody was on the you know was there watching was on the ball, but when they build your guns, who knows? And the other thing is, um, you know, when a lot of these companies that, 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 that make guns outside the United States, um, there's always, their, their, their future is always in question, right? Because, because basically Biden can just turn around and ban the import of, of the Lynx 12 pretty much anytime he wants. So this is a consideration that these companies, you know, take into account. You know, how much time, effort, investment are they going to put into putting into these guns that, you know, the importation of them into the United States can be stopped at any time. So that's that's something that they're going to consider, um, you know, and, 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 and the possibility why the quality control, you know, now may not be as good as it was, I don't know, three, four years ago. Okay. So, um, so yeah. So anyway, a couple of things for you guys to think about. Uh, if you got any comments of your own put them in the comment section i'd love to hear from you guys maybe even if you disagree with me that's fine um so oh i was doing the recap I lost my try. so recap reliability who knows right uh the other thing is the mag change right if you got to do a mag change uh specifically because let's say your gun jams up uh these magazines are really big compared to these magazines right so less likely you're going to have an extra one of these on your body compared to one of these uh, and the third thing I brought up is uh, uh, the increased chance of user error, all right? Uh, most of the beginners that I train, I see them jam up the Lynx 12 way more frequently than, than the AR-15 or the AK. Um, and then, you know, a lot of times they, they do manage to, to jam up the pistols pretty good. But that, that's the reason why I would say, yeah, uh, Lynx 12 is probably not your best choice. Um, you know, it's a great gun. I have three of them but probably not your best choice for home defense. So, uh, talk to you guys soon.